decide which one to go with? Back in the 1990s, I was read into or briefed on a project that involved an interagency group that had the ability to disclose the ET presence in a way that would frighten everyone on Earth and convince the public that there was an alien threat, which was completely false. It's all a lie. And that this had been developed in the 50s, and they had been developing the means and the psychological warfare to make that happen. So in the 1990s, I wrote a paper called When Disclosure Serves Secrecy. What that means is there are two kinds of disclosures that might happen. A truthful one that is also a hopeful one, which is what I gave up my medical career to try to actuate to. And then there's the one that is spun by the Spinmeisters in Washington and at the Pentagon and CIA, which runs like this. It's true the UFOs are real. They are here as a threat. They're violating our airspace. They're a national security and a threat and a threat to our sovereignty. I'm quoting. The purpose of the program, uh, Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, was really designed to do just that. Uh, from a national security perspective, identify those things that we see and try to ascertain and determine if that information is a potential threat to national security. And we knew this was going to happen because I had met with people who were in these classified projects who were on interagency committees that had everything set to roll this out, and they were just waiting for the right time. The Soviet Union has ended. We have the global terrorism. While it's still there, it's not like it was around 9-11. This is the next big thing that they want the public to be afraid of. When a pickpocket meets the same, all they sees are his pockets. Or like, if, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And, and it's not that this isn't a genuine perception on their part, because they've been raised their entire political and, and professional career has been designed to have this kind of artificial construct of this, there's this national airspace, and nobody can come into the airspace unless we say so, and they, they've got this super control mechanism going. And they're right at this really important place right now where they're attempting to establish a kind of one government, you know, that they've got the communication systems up, the transportation systems up, they want to establish a planetary government, and there's nothing that is going to motivate the creation of a one world government like the discovery of an ultimate other. Ronald Reagan, standing in front of the United Nations, the Senate, right on it. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. He was silly enough to say it. You know, that's part of his naivete. But the fact is, that is their agenda. Legendary civil rights attorney Daniel Sheehan has spent over 50 years fighting the national security state. The Pentagon Papers and the Iran Contra scandals are but two of his many landmark cases before becoming a whistleblower and legal counsel for the Disclosure Project in 2001. It's helpful, of course, for them to say, oh, UFOs are real. That's quite helpful. We've been trying to get people to understand that now for the last 30 years. But it's all immediately wedded to this fact that they're this horrible threat. And so we have to come forward with a positive set of programs, a positive vision of this. And that's what I'm trying to help get the Vatican and the Jesuit order to become involved in and in putting forth you know, a discussion about the theological and philosophical challenges that this presents to us. But it's not a national security threat. You know, it's not a threat to our species, it's not a threat to our planet, it's a threat to our view as ourselves as the, the be-all and end-all that the entire universe was created as a stage on which to play out the human drama of uh, one single species. You know, that ain't so, but let's, let's get used to it and let's figure out what the, what the new story is. What is the new story? There's a positive story, what is our role in it? We may not be the star, you know, of it, but we're a good supporting character. Uh, in, in the unfolding of our universe, and let's figure out what that story is. The success of Unacknowledged, which has been seen by hundreds of millions of people now. Have you not watched Unacknowledged? What is Unacknowledged? You gotta watch Unacknowledged. What is that one? Okay, you gotta watch Unacknowledged. What is it? You gotta watch Unacknowledged. Is that that Stephen Greer movie? Caused a reaction within the intelligence community of the United States. And so what the major media has begun to do is to cooperate with the intelligence community in reporting all this information out 
but with this peculiar spin, very subliminal at this stage, that is a threat. The project was called the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, run by an official named Luis Elizondo. I think this is a national security imperative. We have clear things that we do not understand how they work, operating in areas that we can't control. One of my first cases uh, coming out of law school was for NBC to establish a right of journalists to protect their confidential news sources. I did the amicus briefs for the New York Times and the Washington Post and, and also for CBS and ABC. And it was at that time that I began to realize that there was this close working relationship between the board of editors of the New York Times and the national security community. That there's conversations going on all the time between the, the board of editors and the national security people. Uh, and we actually got an affidavit from Teddy Sorensen saying that, oh yes, the national security state, the CIA and everybody consult regularly with the New York Times to get them not to tell information about covert operations that were engaged in. I was surprised uh, to find that out at that point. I began to do an investigation about this as the lawyer for the Times, now and for NBC, and found out that there were 42 full-time Central Intelligence Agency or NSA people employed by the major national news media. And they had a whole entire project called Project Mockingbird. And that they were deeply embedded with it, with major national news media. And they were constantly, from their point of view, safeguarding uh, the information that was going to be allowed to get out. And it was quite clear that they viewed themselves as all part of the same basic fraternity. They all shared in the patriotic vision of the Central Intelligence Agency being able to go around the world. The thing we had the biggest challenge with in the Pentagon Papers case is they didn't want to reveal the fact that there was a massive assassination program going on. And it was being funded by heroin trafficking, you know, to keep it away from the congressional funding investigations, etc. I thought this was a terribly newsworthy thing to tell about, but it was beyond the pale. That was not to be talked about here. You know, you could talk about how bad the Vietnam War was, and even the fact that they lied about the Bay of Tonkin uh, incident, but not this. Even the